It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Sheep and Thief. Sheep and Thief is a tile placement game, really it's a drafting game in which you are drafting cards, but then you're going to be using those cards as tiles, trying to gather up some sheep, avoid some thieves, and uh, connect your roads from your barn to some cities to get some victory points. Let me show you. Here's what the game looks like set up. This is the setup for one player, but basically every player would have a play mat just like this in front of them. This tile, which is the robbers, a tile here, a card rather, that tells you uh, is your starting place and whoever got this one with the one there is the starting player. And then on that sheep drawing, you put one sheep. These are sort of these strange little cotton balls, which are very particular. Whoa, whoa. All right. And so the way the game works is the game's a drafting game. You're trying to get the most points at the end of the game. You're going to be playing over three rounds drafting cards. The first round and the third one way, second round the other way. And each round you are going to give each player five cards. And you are going to keep one, look at them all, keep one, pass the rest, get four more here from those keep one, pass them, get three, so on, until you've drafted your five. And then starting from the start player, they are going to play one card and do whatever the card does. Every player will play that way until everyone's played four cards. You do carry one over. Then you play the second round where you're dealt only four cards. And from those five you draft. And then again a third round. And so at the end of three rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. What do you get points from? Very simple. For every sheep still on your board, you are going to get one point. You also get points if any sheep are here in your pen. I'll explain how they get there in just a second. You are going to get points if you connect using roads from your home barn here all the way to this city, you get plus five. But over here to this city, you get plus five. And if you connect down here to either this road or this road, you get plus 10. And then besides that, for every river you have connecting to one other river at least, like that, each river card is worth two points. And you add all that together, highest score is the winner, okay? And so let's say these are the cards I ended up with. On my turn, I can play any one of these. If I play a card with a sheep, I play it, I put a sheep on it. Now let me uh, make it clear here, when you play these cards out, the only thing, well you have to first of all play next to a card that's already there, and the only thing that has to match are rivers. So this card, I could legally play this card here. That's fine, I can do that. It's not ideal, but I can do it. However, rivers, when I play a river, this is not legal. I can play here, and then this card would have to go here, but this card here, that's an illegal placement. So rivers have to touch rivers or go off the board. So, for my first turn, I'm gonna do that. Put a sheep there, that's it, that's my first turn. If uh, I play a card that has multiple sheep, somewhere legally, nowhere here now of course, then I put as many sheep there as the illustrations tell me. The other cards have sometimes dogs. If you have a dog on a card, then you get to move a group of sheep as far as the number of dogs that show up. So in this case I can move this sheep here, or if I want it, I can move this one here. The reason you want to move them around is because the sheep at the barns are safe. If I play a card that has a robber, for example, one of these, let's get this out of there, it's illegal anyway. If I play this card here, that means that this token on my board, I'll be able to move it one space. I can move it up, down, right or left. And the trick is that anything I do on my board, so let's say I move it up. Any, anything I do on my board with the robber has to be replicated on everybody else's board. Everyone has to mirror everybody else's robber movement. 
the robber has two effects basically the first one is that anywhere they are you cannot build there if it's still empty and the second is that, that if they ever land on a place that has sheep and there is no barn there to protect them then you take them whoever made the move takes the sheep and puts them in the pen here and those score for them all right and so that's pretty much the game. You're going to play your cards each round, drafting new cards. Each round you play four. You're going to put them into play, populate them if you need to. Play, populate them. Sometimes have the sheep stolen from you. If these guys move, ah, these are gone now. They go to whoever stole them from me. You try to connect to the roads. In this case, I have the barn here connected to there. That's plus five points at the end of the game. You are going to ultimately play 12 cards, four cards in three rounds. And at the end, most victory points, like I said, sheep are one, the towns are five, five, or 10, and rivers are going to be two points apiece. Let's throw a couple of rivers out here. They are probably the trickiest thing, really, is the rivers, because they're very difficult to, to get just right, because they do have to connect. So this is all fine. And so two, four, six points, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, plus five is 16. That would be the score of this right now. That's it, highest score at the end is the winner. The game is pretty straightforward as you can see, but, but it's got a lot of clever tactics in it and it's got a great flow. The game is quick. It feels like you are interacting with the players, both with the drafting and with the movement of that thief token. The card placement is fun. The drafting is engaging. This is a great little game. This, this feels to me the way that Carcassonne the card game should have been. This, this should have been Carcassonne the card game. Uh, I was not a big fan of that game because it didn't feel much like Carcassonne. This feels a little like Carcassonne, the card game. And it's just wonderful. Quick, tight, interesting mechanisms, uh, just a, a great vibe. I, I always have a good time playing this one. Now, I do have a couple of issues with it, I think, and largely component issues. The uh, sheep in here, those little fluffy balls, that's cute once, the first time. After that, it's just annoying. <laughs> you know, they're they're... They easily roll off the table. They're hard to put on a card and for them to stay there sometimes. So that's iffy. And then the other thing is the play, the, the paper mats, the player mats. I understand they have to be just a folded up piece of paper, but I wish that there was a, a something of a, of a better quality, you know. But it is what it is. I will put up with those two uh, uh, annoyances in order to play such an amazing little game. This, folks, is it's just a wonderful drafting and tile-laying game. If you like those genres at all, get this little filler. You will not regret it. Sheep and Thief, two thumbs way up from me. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.